Taiwanese lunchboxes, also known as bian dang locally, are a staple food here in Taiwan. With millions being sold every day, you are never too far away from a bian dang restaurant, and as such, they are something I eat several times a week. Oh, it's nice. But in this video, we are planning to travel from Fulong in Taipei to Guanshan in Taitong, all in one day, sampling eight of the more interesting bian dangs as we go. Alan, you're an absolute barbarian. And if you thought we were going to make this challenge easy by heading down the east coast, you are wrong. As we had an 11 hour driving route plan that would take us anti clockwise around Taiwan through 12 counties to eight different Biandang locations, one of which we were warned strongly against sharing with you here on YouTube. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Beginning at sunrise and ending in the early hours the following day. A total journey of 700 kilometers around this beautiful country in search of the perfect Taiwanese lunchbox. So, without further ado, let me introduce my video partner for today. My new friend Dave from. From Tracks. Dave, Dave, Media Tracks. Dave from Tracks. We are on an adventure today. We're going to be eating about 8 million dangs, and we're going to go from the north to the south. These guys make some absolutely amazing, interesting cultural content about Taiwan. I make lots of content about food, so this seemed like the perfect adventure. Finding 8 different storied. Biandang. Yeah, that's right. We're going to look at them uh, from our point of view, from the context and the history of the Biandang. And you're going to sample them, aren't you? And I'm going to eat them. Simple as that. Biandang ratings out of 10 on my channel and the history and cultural story behind each restaurant on Trax's channel. But as for now, the challenge was underway here at Ilong Fulong Biandang. And as Dave was buying our breakfast Biandang, yes, yes. I want to invite you to comment down below how many of the Target 8 lunch boxes do you think we will eat? And of course, don't forget to watch to the end of the video to see how successful. Bye-bye. <laughs> hi oh. oh, give me five. Or unsuccessful we were. Oh no! But anyway, it was time for Biandang number one of eight. Can you believe it? And what's this one? This is belly pork. Ooh, Huaro. Yes, belly pork. This is one of my favorite Biandangs in Taiwan, Fulon Biandang. A little bit salty for some people's taste, but I really like it. Okay, like a bit of salt. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. The meat is, um, you can tell it's been cooked a long time. Yeah, it's yeah. marinated. And just briefly, you mentioned that this used to be a fisherman's biandang. Well, it started out as a fisherman's biandang, yeah. according to the research I've done already. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of morphed into uh, a commuter biandang. So okay. the people coming from Taipei to Huailin and Ilan would pick up a biandang on the way. And they used to sell the biandang from the platform okay. onto the train so the passengers didn't need to disembark. Interesting. Well, don't yeah. say too much. Okay. Because we want to hear more about it on your channel. Oh, sure. You are right. It is. A, I can taste it's a bit more salty than a usual one, but yep. each one, everyone has their own individual taste, right? Mm, really nice. Really well marinated, well cooked. As for the actual ingredients of this biandang, I'm absolutely starving. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat dinner yesterday because I knew I'd be eating a lot of food today. So I think that's giving it some extra points. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. And then the rest of the biandangs that we eat throughout today, I'll uh, judge them according to this one. But so far, so good. 8 out of 10 for Fulong Biandang. Mm. So an excellent start to the day with a delicious breakfast lunchbox. Wow, nice. But there was no time to dilly-dally around looking at the interesting railway scenery as we have a challenge to complete. So it was time to get on the road and head toward our next stop, which was the old mining village of Jing Tong, 31 kilometers away, where trains run right alongside the road. Tourists come to browse the local shops of the old street. And of course, where people come for the famous railway biendangs. So me and Dave sat down ready to eat in what was probably one of the most traditional locations I've ever eaten, a biendang. And for this one, the ingredients are varied and look delicious. We've got a zu pai, pai gu, at least half a dozen other ingredients in there. Mm. Not bad. That meat is really, really flavorsome. And you were saying in your video that this place used to be a mining village or mm. still is? It's the epicenter of Japanese mining, colonial mining actually. So the highest output in the whole Japanese era, mm -hmm. the colonial era, was here. And all up there on the hills, we've got lots of mines, mm -hmm. old abandoned mines. And uh, of course now it's a tourist area because they've uh, redeveloped the area from mining into tourism. Okay. This is really good. I do enjoy a more high-level lunchbox, and mm. this one seems to have more ingredients in it. Mm. It's got the bean sprouts. Is that radish or potato? That's radish. Radish. Mm. And of course, one of my favorites, <laughs> half a tea egg. Mm. Another key ingredient of a lunchbox is a slice of Taiwanese sausage. Always a little bit sweeter than Western sausage, mm. right? But it's really, uh, really good. Mm. But overall, I'm going to give this second lunchbox 
uh, seven and a half out of 10. Maybe not quite as good as the first one, but there's not much difference to be honest. I really want to emphasize here that the half a point difference was so negligible and was probably influenced by how hungry I was for breakfast. Mm. But we didn't hang around to take too many videos in Jing Tong as the next leg of the journey was a long 115 kilometer one hour drive to Tofen in Miaoli where we arrived at a restaurant called Yuan Guang. Now we've chosen this place as our third stop because interestingly the place next to the shop is the former Tofen bus station and as Dave will tell you on his video there's lots of history and reasoning behind why this place was so important. To Taiwanese culture. It used to be a very popular interchange before Taiwan built their freeways numbers one and three and as people went up and down the west coast they would often stop at this bus station and pick up one of these biendangs. Looks like two nice big cuts of meat. A little bit different. One is lighter than the other and one is darker. Ooh, a lot more flavor in the darker one. The lighter one is very tender but the flavorsome one is the, is the darker one. Mm, I love a bit of pickled ginger. Oh wow. Tangy. Mm -mm. How are you finding the uh, sauerkraut? Sauerkraut is good. Nice, isn't it? Pickled ginger is good. Yeah. I really like pickled ginger. Yeah. Interesting, some places give you a full tea egg, some mm. people only give you a half tea egg. I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. It's still very good, nice and filling, but I still think my favorite for the day has been the first one, Fulong. Maybe that was because I was super hungry when I ate it, but let's get to the next stop and see how it compares. Wait until we see the next location. Oh, it's really? really special, yeah. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. As Dave said, the next location is going to be incredibly special. So it was back on the road again, heading south, but first a quick fuel stop. And after trying to be sweet to the fuel attendant, but no doubt failing due to my poor Chinese pronunciation, we embarked on the long 120-ish kilometer journey south. Unfortunately, we're not stopping in Taichung this time. I think I've comprehensively covered Taichung's lunch boxes in my previous video. So we're going straight from Tofen to to the next location. That, for reasons they don't want to share, is the only illegal Biendang store I have ever heard of or visited. So I won't share the location or anybody's face. Looks like a prison or something. <laughs> right. It's really dodgy. Looks like we're buying. But once we'd ordered and collected our fourth lunchbox of the day. Oh. So, so Lisa, what's the? Oh, okay. It was time to sit and eat again. This is certainly probably the most interesting <laughs> place of the day. 10 out of 10 for location. <laughs> well done to your producer or whoever found this place. Is that you, I guess? <laughs> That's me. Well done. So this is gonna be a quick stop as we and our cameras were being chased away by the seemingly illegal Biendang sellers. <laughs> but let's talk Biendang. And this was another belly pork lunchbox. This time with an added small portion of mackerel that Dave had warned me would be extra salty oh immediately crazy <laughs> salty very salty oh but delicious so to ease away the saltiness the next obvious step was a huge bite of the fatty pork belly which was almost certainly the best piece of meat i'd eaten all day nice so good <laughs> i love a fatty pork belly That's bloody hell it's fatty isn't it wow i'm still not full i'm still <laughs> enjoying each lunchbox this one like the fat slides down so easily it's like <laughs> making it so easier to eat. I wouldn't say it's a nine out of 10, but it's better than ones we've had so far. 8.7 out of 10. Really, you think it's better than Fulong? I think it's better than Fulong. Just mm. the whole experience is mm. just so amazing. Mm. And the food is really good. I believe we're off to another special location. Mm, yeah, it's a bit of a drive, we're a little bit behind schedule, but we're gonna make it. Yeah, we're off to uh, Ali Mountain. Ali San, right. here Ali we come. San, yeah. Yes, beautiful Ali San in Jiayi County is the next Biendang destination and is a 111 kilometer drive away, a lot of which is off the freeway, meaning it might take a little longer, but will allow us to enjoy the stunning scenery as we drive by. And apart from being held up just a little, we eventually made our way to our destination. Something tells me that's the place behind me. Let's get inside, see what they've got. My instinct was right. The Feng Shui Hu Hotel in Ali San is famous for its expensive gourmet biendangs. So we made our way inside, ordered two of the more expensive options. And after waiting for the Instagrammers to take their photos in front of the biggest lunchbox tin I've ever seen, Dave and I took our seats and prepared to eat Biendang number five. Oh my goodness. 
This one looks next level, but $180. Expensive. Double the price of anything we've had so far. The ingredients look absolutely stunning. We've got two meats, chicken for the first time today. Yep. And then, now please excuse the noisy audience that were watching us as they had recognized me from my channel, but I had to correct them on one thing they were discussing about Dave. Tamin Iwe needs a Lucas. Tapos a Lucas, huh? Tapi Lucas, so I eat <laughs> so the correction being made, it was back to the lunchbox and back to that glorious looking pork rib, which to me can only be eaten one way. I'm going hands on. Okay. Oh, feet, fingers, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Alan, you're an absolute barbarian. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the flavor, the flavor of that sauce is unbelievable. Mm. That is so good. It's not the mm. tenderest meat, mm. a little bit chewy, but mm. still really, really yummy, mm. really delicious. The sauce is excellent, isn't it? Yeah. So good. Yeah. There's some uh, bamboo shoots in there, which is something new for today. Yeah. There seems to be less rice on this one. The other ones were very rice heavy. Mm. This one, they've gone for quality over quantity. And this one, I'm, I have no idea what it is, but the lady told me it comes from beans. That's bean goat. Oh, wow. Like it's like it. fruity. It's like, mm. I want to say candy. Mmm, that is a really well cooked chicken leg. Really juicy, well cooked right through to the bone, not dry at all. Oh my goodness, I am. I'm blown away by this one, but what's a Taiwan man? Me as a Taiwan man. CP Zi, Pen Zhong Yao, eat by Ba Shi Kui. You think it's worth it? If I was to come here independently and just eat this as one bin dip bian dang, it would be a 10 out of 10. 100%. But because of the price, I'm going to give it. 8.8. 8.8? Bad yam ba. Two lucky numbers. And that's just because the price is too high. I can't justify spending that kind of thing on what should be a daily food. If you've been to this lunchbox shop here in Alisan, then let us know what you think. Mm. Do you think the sea pizza is worth it? Do you think it's okay to pay $180 for a lunchbox on a special occasion? Or do you think it's just uh, ridiculous? So yes, get your comments and opinions of this $180 bien dang into the comments down below. But after a little sightseeing and being an idiot in Alisan, I quickly had time for a free selfie with some followers. <laughs> and then it was back on the road for our longest leg of the trip yet, a 163 kilometer drive to head towards Fangshan in Pingdong. And this is where we learned that maybe I hadn't had time for being an idiot in selfies as the sun went down while we were driving and brought with it a thick, thick fog, which slowed traffic drastically and meant we fell even further behind schedule. And as such, when we arrived at the Fang San Bien Dang store, we found it closed. We're two hours too late, but yeah, I'm still hungry. Is that weird? <laughs> Yes, weirdly still hungry, but incredibly worried about making the trip across the country to Taidong, only to find the final two restaurants closed. We called the planned seventh restaurant to see if they were still open. Okay, it's ringing, it's ringing, it's ringing. Come on, be open, be open, be open. Oh no. No luck. Our plan was completely falling apart until we called the planned final restaurant in Guansan. Wait, ni hao, ni si guan san bian dang ma? Ah, ni hao, wo men si liang ge wai guo ren youtuber pa, jin tian yao pa ying pian. Liang ge, oh, ni si ding bian dang de shi ma? Dui, ke shi wo men, wo men hui hen zi dao, hen late, and they came up with a plan for us. Hao, da gai ji dian. Oh, da gai, shi dian duo hen wan, hen wan, zhen de... Shi dian duo, hao. Oh, fei tang hao, zhen de ma? So the video was still alive. The Guanshan restaurant was going to prepare two lunch boxes for us and leave them in the nearby convenience store for us to collect. All we had to do was make the huge 188 kilometer journey in the dark from west coast to east coast and pick up our package. Okay, and we've arrived at Guansan Station here in Taidong County. This is the final Bien Dang of the day. Only one thing left to wait and see. Did my message get through? Did they understand what I wanted them to do? Have they left two Bien Dangs for us at the convenience store? Let's get inside and find out. Oh, 
So it looked like we'd made the 188 kilometer trip from west coast to east coast for absolutely nothing and our video was gonna end on a huge L until the Clark checked inside the microwave. Yes, the Biendang shop owner had kept his word and delivered our Biendangs earlier to a different Clark who hadn't passed on the message. But the point is, we had our Biendangs and it was time to eat for the final time today. Newspaper, just like a traditional fish and chips Absolutely. from the uh, from Blighty. For you. Wonderful. One for me. Oh, yeah. And this here in Guansan, Taidong, again, looks like an absolutely delicious selection of meats. Looks like there's several different meats in there. Wow, yeah, there's like some pork, char sui, triangle of ham, there's egg, there's sausage, a big, huge piece of sausage. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> absolutely. Mm, the amount of meat in here for under $80, that's mm. insane value. Oh, the egg is like spicy, like a pe peppery spice to the egg. All right, it's fantastic being done. Yeah. The thing about this is it's a uh, Bansan rice. Okay. Bansan rice. So the rice is very, it tastes a lot different to the sort of rice you get in the other Biendangs. Really want to say thanks to the, uh, the owner of this place for uh, putting up with us and going the extra mile and mm. taking it to the family mart. 9.5 out of 10. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? It's equally as good as the one in Alisan, mm. but the value is just unbelievable. And I believe there's gonna be some goodie bags on offer from Guanxi Media, so what you need to do is go over there, comment on their video with uh, Alan sent me, or <laughs> hello from life in Taiwan, anything to let them know that you came from my channel and they'll pick out a few of you guys to take home a Guanxi Media goodie bag. But I think it's time for us to say good night and goodbye. It has been an absolutely mammoth journey. Hope you've enjoyed the journey with us. Thanks for watching. As for now, as always, time to say goodbye. Big thanks to Dave and Colin, but time to say goodbye. So as for now, as always, see you next time in my life in Taiwan. Bye.